So, um, I've just been driving stakes into the ground. My arms are shaky because it's hard work. I got one of those fence post drivers, the big orange guys. So, there's the apple tree. You just saw the pomegranate. Um, they were on the front porch. Now they're cleaned up. This guy's almost done. Let me show you the other ones. <laughs> I'm so tired. And I still have to water the indoor plants too. So I'll show you the fence post driver. Oh, and somebody keeps leaving me poop here by my trash. I think it's a fox. I mean, hopefully it's a fox. There's my fence post driver. I, um, I don't know if you can tell, it's kind of orange and red. It had some scratches on it when it came in and I still had that. marking the yard for the garden so I spray painted it it's kind of primer and spray paint oh and the jug over here I mean trash bin but anyway um I dumped the gross water out of it and stuck one of my jugs in it to hold it down because of the wind the squirrels are still drinking out of this I still have mixed feelings on it fine The fence posts aren't driven all the way into the ground. They're seven foot and they're supposed to be five foot when installed. I only got them a foot in so that the, the kind of bigger catch shovel on them was in the ground. So they're stable just so, you know, the birds can get used to them and I can see kind of how they look and where they are and finish driving them later so my ears don't fall off. So here's with me for scale. Those eight foot, by, 8 foot by 4 foot, two two packs I got when they were on sale online because, you know, I'm still waiting on the construction. The, the county uh, permits person or whatever, still can't figure it out. Um, here's those with me for scale. <laughs> those um, arch trellises that I got for, um, I'll put some metal mesh across the top. I'll put these, you know, maybe five feet apart or whatever and more metal mesh across the top so I have kind of a bigger gazebo for kiwis to grow on. Oh. I was resting those metal poles against my ribs so my ribs are kind of sore too. So let's peek in the garden real quick. There's a horseradish. I guess somebody went digging. I don't know if it's a frog or a squirrel. Um, I thought it was going to be freezing overnight on Tuesday. But it's going to be 37, not 32. Um, so maybe I don't need to pick everything in a hurry quite yet. Look, some of those onions survived. Maybe they'll grow next year. <laughs> maybe I'll have blooming onions next year then. Tomato kind of dug up by that frog. Or toad, I guess. The I think it's scarret, but I don't know. Maybe I'll dig up its roots this year. Need to cut back that blackberry again. There's all sorts of may pops everywhere. I hear the hawk. It's around today. It's flying around that big tree over there. The tall pecan that's in the neighbor's yard. Um, this is trickery. There's one blue fire still. Every once in a while I go search for may pops in here. There's a carrot that I want to pull up. There's another carrot. This is, I want to say radicchio. It turns red when it gets cold. These are sorrel. Now that it's cooler and wetter, they're growing back. So I go through and have a nibble. Um, tomatoes aren't really ripening too much, although I see one ripe one. What else? What else? Those red pears always split and get moldy, so it's not even worth it. This might be a tree. I swear it's only one year old. I should pick it and move it somewhere else. And by pick it, I mean dig it up. I'm really tired. <laughs> um, what else? Maybe we can see where I put in fence posts from the back here. I still have some strawberries blooming. Oh, their petals fell off last night when it rained, I guess. So, as usual, the strawberries are there. That white dandelion came back. Those asparagus spears are thick and juicy, so I think I'm going to have some asparagus next year. I don't know if the kiwi in this pot died because I didn't really see leaves later into the year, but the ones over there still kind of have leaves. 
more carrots in here for me to pick. I actually picked a white and purple one the other day. I picked a carrot because I wanted a snack. I haven't gone to the grocery store in a couple of days and it was, I mean, it was a little bit on the smaller side, but it was still tasty. It was nice and um, like tender. Oh, one of my little toad houses. I forgot it was even in here because it was so overgrown. I'm trying to step over this thing. So, you can see the fence posts here drove in. Oh, and the Christmas tree looking tree that's right there, the deer, I think, jumped on it, bent that middle pole, and ripped a couple branches off. So I think when I put up the netting around the jujubes back here, I'm going to stretch it all the way back to the fence line because, oh my god, deer are so destructive. Let's go look at it so we can shame the deer. Berries are okay. Look at this. This thing's completely bent. I picked it up. This branch is torn off. There's bark gone here. This branch is torn off. My god. The deer are the worst. So I think from the middle of the fence here, I'm gonna pull it out to there, out to here, maybe enclose the berries too. I don't know. I guess it'll be a deer trap, but that's okay. At least I stopped eating this thing because I'd put this netting up. Deer are the worst, especially when you can't eat them. So here is still empty until I get the construction done. My bushes up front have a couple of brown spots on them and I was thinking, oh no, I've killed them. But then the ones that are in the ground have some brown spots too. This little woodland area is doing well. I'm glad I traded some pots for pieces of wood so the bugs have somewhere to hang out. This guy's doing well. It's either pecan or walnut. One behind it. It's either pecan or walnut. I keep chopping it back, but it keeps coming back. These sumacs are doing great. I'm glad I kind of chopped the top. You can kind of tell where it was, too, that year or two ago, so that it branched out nicely and is nice and full. I haven't walked over here in about a week. I don't want to mow again because it was a disaster last time. I felt bad. There's one of the bushes, there's another one. Hopefully the papa by the stake survived. Flowers here, some pink flower here. I don't even know what it is, but it's nice, so fine. Hopefully it receives itself. Another papa over there. I think I see a leaf, which is good. And the miniature pear cross is doing well. I guess the leaves just kind of brown and fell off, which is fine. This Mirabelle is not doing well because it's blooming. <laughs> the poor confused thing. So, um, uh oh, I think it's pushing out new leaves too. That's not good. Well, hopefully it gets the message that it is not springtime and it's fall time and it needs to go to sleep. Please don't have buds. It's not good for you to have buds now. Go to sleep. Uh, there's another papa over here somewhere. Hopefully it survived. Can't even tell where it is among the leaves, which is good maybe. Ew, it's a hornet. Um, cattails did not bloom this year, probably because this bush got so big. You know, it might not even be a bush, it might be a tree, which is fantastic. Uh, oh, it looks like it grew in a little bit, that evergreen. I'm glad I dumped water down there when it was really, really dry so that this bush survived. Bush and or... Oh, sorry. Bush and or tree. Oh, more cardinals. I guess this is where the cardinals hang out. Um, let's walk through here real quick. Ugh. I'm covered in bug spray, by the way. So, here's the fruit cocktail tree. It survived the year. Hopefully all the weeds around it are helping it. Oh, is that a little spider? No, it's some sort of fly. Uh, hopefully all the weeds around it will help distract the deer from eating it. 
because I don't want to get like 50 more fence posts. There's a Popeye down there. And another one back here covering all these vines, which is fine because they like shade when they're so off. And one over here. Yeah, it survived. I think the deer keep bending those posts. And another one over here that's lost a couple of leaves, but it's okay. And I like how it's in kind of a wooded area because I've made this kind of a wooded area. I don't know if anything that I planted here this year has an understory actually survived, but hopefully it did. I still have to spill all those rocks under here. I was going to clean up some more of these paint chips. Now there's leaves to contend with, but my back was feeling bad earlier. And by earlier, I mean all summer long. Um, maybe I'll wake up these leaves one of these days. Uh, there's one of those little houses. When I was getting those chocolate fruits, I would chuck them over here. Hopefully the animals had a good time with it. There's one of the skins. There's one that's kind of in the shape of a boat. Let's go over there. Nice little boat for the animals. Okay, maybe that's it. Oh, we're up to 11 minutes, so we're good. Okay, I'm gonna go take a quick break and then water the indoor plants. And, um, now that it's winter time and I don't feel completely, completely wrecked, I decided maybe I'll actually do stuff this winter. So I got myself some cloth and I'm gonna have some sewing projects. Whew. Let's look over here real quick. Nice. I love all these asters. So this one's kind of a shorter one. The other ones are kind of taller. Don't know where these cosmos came from, but they're nice. This pear tree survived. I fear that the spots on it are fire blight, but it's supposed to be fire blight resistant, so I guess it'll survive. The rhubarb caught a second wind now that it's nice and cold. I have the plan to chop some spears or whatever they're called and I'm making way for that leaf there so it can actually photosynthesize. Oh, geez. I shouldn't have stepped here. So it can actually photosynthesize. Oh, this one's doing better. That one's still puny. That's a weed. Yay! Well, I'm gonna go shake these off, I guess. <laughs> so, everybody's doing okay. Through here. Hopefully, I'm not stepping on turtles. Asters around where I put all the berries. This is a berry. I'm guessing it's a black raspberry. Because I put thimble berries here and those don't have spines, and I put salmon berries there too, and I think the salmon berries don't have canes that are that light of a color. So I'm here. Oh god, they don't come off. We gotta pick them off. Oh no. Got some in my hair. Oh my god, what a disaster. Anyway, here's the fig. This is the worst. <laughs> so, here's the fig. It did quite well this year. Here's the little um, gooseberry. So I didn't see any blooms really out of this fig. Maybe in the spring that might have fallen off, but I'm, I mean, knock on wood, right? The deer didn't eat it, which is fantastic. Maybe they just don't know what it is. Maybe it's because there's a nice pole here strategically and another one right here for the bird feeder that I didn't hang up because of that bird flu that's going around. Um, so the fig is doing great. It did die back and freeze a lot last winter. Now it's further high land, right further down the garden. It's a little bit colder. So maybe that it's up here and closer to buildings and houses and stuff, it'll do a little bit better because it's a little bit warmer. Wow, this is, this is terrible. You know, I do have bags of seeds that I'm storing for next year, so maybe I'll just pick these off into that. Now I know, right? Okay, that's it. I'm going to go inside. See y'all next week.